I'm pleased to be back here at a Biostock event and present Expression Biotech. My name is Ben Fransen. I'm the CEO of Expression Biotech. And we have a groundbreaking therapeutic breast cancer vaccine at it, which is approaching the first clin clinical trial as we speak. And I'm telling much more about that at this event. So Expression Biotech Holding RB is the public listed company at NASDAQ First North Gross Market. Um, and it 100% owns Expression Biotechnologies APS, which is the Danish subsidiary where all operations take place. And also where we have our vaccine pipeline, our uh, technology platform, and we also have some services business there. We also own 34% of Adaptback, which is a, a Danish biotech company that Expression co-founded in 2017. It holds a very unique virus-like particle technology. That platform is clinical phase three validated like Expression's production technology platform and is a key component in the breast cancer vaccine asset I'm going to talk about. We have a leadership team and a board of directors uh, as depicted here. I'm the first one to admit that our leadership team is uh, heavily biased towards males. Uh, however, our board of directors uh, has a 50-50% split between the genders. Uh, and very importantly, actually, is that combined our leadership team and the board, we have 300 years of experience in taking vaccines all the way from the lab bench, all through clinical development and even into the market. <clears throat> I'm going to address HER2 uh, breast cancer. Uh, unfortunately, it may affect one to eight women in their lifetime. Uh, there are some concerning statistics about this disease in terms of diagnosis and, and even deaths. And HER2 uh, can, in 15 to 30 percent of cases, be the, the factor for uh, a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And HER2 is a protein that we all carry, but when it overexpresses, it can lead to this potentially fatal disease. And that's the target of our therapeutic breast cancer vaccine. We call it ES2B C001. We have designed it using our uh, unique technology platforms. We make the antigen uh, using our express system, uh, and we couple the antigens on the surface of a virus line particle using the technology from Adaptman, which we own 34% of. This, this combination is already validated in clinical phase three because it was the same technologies that were used in a COVID-19 vaccine that the very Nordic took a license to and brought all the way through to clinical phase three. It met the primary endpoint, showing non-inferiority towards Cominati from Pfizer-BioNTech. So as a biotech company, we're extremely proud with this case, clinical phase three validation, which is a blue stamp of our technology platform. The VLP concept is already used in commercially available vaccines. You probably have heard of H HP HPV vaccines, such as Savarix and Gardasil. They exactly, even to the antigen, they're also made in insect cells, which is also the basis for our express technology platform, and couple it to another VLP system. So the concept is already out there. Our combination of antigens and VLP are very immunogenic, very safe, and can make a durable immune response, which is also important in this context because you want to show a long-term effect. And we com can combine it with the standard of care, which is out there, such as Herceptin and Pegeta. We have a very compelling preclinical data package, and this is just a snapshot of what we generated over the last couple of years. To the left, you see a mouse study where mice are being challenged with tumor cells and they will get increased tumors over time. You can see the black curve is the control group with the development of the tumors and the red curve is on the x-axis. There's no development in tumors at all giving our vaccine with an adjuvant. To the right, you see a survival uh, model where you see these mice, they will uh, actually die in the control group uh, around uh, 60 days into the study. We can see with our vaccine, as shown here in the red curve, that even over 600 days, none of these mice, they will <laughs> die. So very compelling data. And we're taking that into a clinical stage here as, as we speak. 
In terms of competition, uh, we face competition against monoclonal antibodies, antibody drug conjugates, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, as shown here in the first three columns, all having some safety issues, as shown in the first five rows here. Of course, we are in a, have been in a preclinical stage, but we can say we have not observed anything related to these uh, safety aspects as known in the, in the current treatments available. Uh, standard of care resistance is an important factor, so up to one-third of patients will develop resistance to the therapy using, for example, monoclonal antibodies. And we have actually, in an in vitro setting, demonstrated that we can break tolerance and not develop resistance to our therapy. And the long-term effect is also what we, uh, we, we will be able to generate. Um, Progression-free survival can can uh, it, it can current uh, treatment can give up to 19 months of progression-free survival. If you translate our vaccine into that setting, we actually have uh, progression-free survival for more than seven years. Of course, we hope to translate that into a clinical setting. Our plan going forward, now we have spent a couple of years in a non-clinical setting and we have all set there. We applied for the clinical trial authorization application uh, in Q3 and we are awaiting the feedback from the authorities. Um, we are going to start the clinical phase one. We have set it will be in Q1 2025 and that's still the plan and we will conduct a trial uh, uh, in uh, Austria um, and after that we aim to go into a clinical phase two to generate the clinical proof of concept uh, down the road and generate the real value. And we also have potential to expand on the indication beyond breast cancer because HER2 is also prevalent in gastric cancer as well. We have cash, uh, we have actually just had a rights issue here earlier this year. And at the end of Q3, we had 76 million SEC uh, at our bank account. Uh, that's actually higher than our market value these days. It's, uh, that's, that's how market values look for a lot of biotech companies these days. Uh, but it's fine for our phase one planning. We have some important milestones coming up. The CTA approval, obviously, it's right around the corner. We're very comfortable in getting that. And we can start the first in human uh, trial and get some interim results during 2025 before it concludes in early 2026. We have a warrant exercise window uh, which just started yesterday. So the rights issue we did earlier this year included two warrant schemes, the TO10s, which are running now and through to 4th of December, and the TO11, which is running next year in September and October. Um, so just to, to wrap up, actually, this is a groundbreaking novel breast cancer vaccine uh, that we're looking into. It's a 27 billion euro market with a high growth rate over the coming five years. We have demonstrated tumor growth inhibition and 100% survival of treated animals. And we can see that it can break tolerance and overcome resistance as uh, is known with monoclonal antibodies. We've just filed the clinical trial application and aim to start the first clinical trial just around the corner. And we're committed to get this into a clinical uh, phase two setting so we can demonstrate a clinical proof of concept and get the most value out of this important asset. All right, I'm happy to take questions, Sanya. <laughs> Thank you, Bent. You can join me here. Um, what biomarkers do you use in your clinical trials? It's a HER2 focused uh, vaccine, so HER2 plays a, a role there, of obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Short and sweet answer there. Uh, how do you intend to position your main candidate within the breast cancer treatment field? It's a novel vaccine concept, and I mentioned some of the competitive advantages, which are all going to play a role in our uh, competition and positioning of, of this asset. The resistance aspect is very important. Uh, it is, as I mentioned, up to 30% of cases patients can develop resistance with the, with the known therapies there. And if we can avoid the resistance, that's uh, obviously a, a great place to position our asset. 
So that is sort of the push you will do, that mm -hmm. this could be uh, an option for those who, you know, won't develop that then, or have. Um, someone writes, you are looking for early licensing of your main can candidate. Why is that? One could argue for a larger upside further along. Yeah, well, actually, as I alluded to in, in this setting, we want to we were committed to bring this to a clinical proof of concept, which is after conclusion of a clinical phase two trial, which is probably three or four years down the road. But getting us there is, uh, is of course, a challenge with a, a company in evaluation as we are. So that's why we have recently started being more active at partnering conventions like BioEurope, for example, just to present what we have. And that's interesting uh, because we get some nice feedback. That doesn't mean we necessarily strike a licensing deal just around the corner. Some of the more important players want to see clinical data, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, you have entered a non-binding agreement with Serum Institute of India. What would a definite agreement mean for you if they would give it to you? What what word, sorry? <laughs> what a definite agreement. I mean if it's now it's a non binding agreement, mm -hmm. if this person have understand <laughs> his <laughs> research correctly, I think a colleague of mine. Uh, if they would enter to a, into a binding agreement and a definitive agreement, what would that mean for you? Of course. That that particular negotiation is uh, revolving Serum Institute of India, which is the world's largest vaccine manufacturer. They've taken a strong interest in uh, malaria acids that University of Oxford have been developed over the last couple of years using Expressions uh, Express uh, production platform. And the term sheet revolves two of the four malaria vaccine acids that's going on. A definitive agreement will obviously be a further blue stamp of what we do from the world's largest vaccine manufacturer. Uh, I'm thrilled about the process and it's going in the right direction, so it's good. Okay, thank you so much, Ben, for your presentation. Thank you.